Hello everyone and welcome to another math tutorial. Today's video will be the final video in a five part series on solving exponential and logarithmic equation and the second video in solving logarithmic equations. Uh, today's video, different than the previous one, is going to focus on equations that have multiple logarithms, uh, specifically uh, two logarithms uh, are going to be what my examples showcase. All right, let's get right into the first example. Okay, this first example, we're gonna start off with what I think is the easiest uh, kind of best case scenario with problems you're gonna see involving multiple logarithms. And that's the equation that has uh, a single logarithm on each side of the equation. Uh, and specifically, like, note that these logarithms are by themselves. In other words, there's like nothing else over here that's added or subtracted uh, on, on either side. It's just logarithm equals logarithm. Now, the examples that you're gonna see uh, are you know, like this, uh, probably in any problem that you're doing that has multiple logarithms, uh, the logarithms are gonna be the same base. Uh, that's important, I think, in making this a little bit more doable as well. Well, what we did in the last video with logarithmic equations is we exponentiated both sides of the equation above a common base. And that's exactly what we're gonna do here as well. Uh, I'm gonna rewrite this as, and I'll go ahead and rewrite the whole thing even though it's a lot to write. It's a step that you're likely to skip down the road uh, as you know what's going on. But I'm gonna rewrite this as three raised to the log base three of four x plus three equals three raised to the log base three of two x plus 15. Uh, notice I'm using a base three and I'm doing that because the base of the logarithms uh, was also three. So I want those to match. And when they do match, they cancel out. Uh, so essentially now all that's left is just the stuff that was inside the logarithms to begin with. So once you recognize kind of how this game is played, like I said, this might be a, a step that you kind of skip over, uh, or maybe you just write the, the threes right here and cancel out at the outset of the problem. Uh, so we now have four X plus three equals two X plus 15. Standard multi-step linear equation from here. I'm gonna take this two X, subtract it to the left side. I'm gonna take this positive three I'm going to subtract it onto the left side. So that gives us 2x equals 12. So x equals 6. That concludes the problem. Second example problem, like the first, we've got two logarithms. Different from the first though, these logarithms are on the same side of the equal sign. And I know, yeah, I could take this logarithm and I could move it over to this side. So that then I would have one logarithm on each side, like the last problem. However, this four here is gonna be added or subtracted to, to one side. And so it's a little different than that, um, you know, th this four is kind of muddying things up a little bit. I can't present this like the last example because that four is there. So we have to approach this problem a little bit differently. I cannot exponentiate everything right now. Um, I, you know, I base two logarithms. I can't just stick a two under everything right now and cancel these out. Um, because like the last problems, like the last video, uh, we have to have a single logarithm, okay? Right now, I don't have a single logarithm on this side of the equation. So what I'm gonna do first, and, and hopefully you've had the practice doing this. If you've gotten to this point, you had to have studied the properties of logarithms. Uh, what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna take these two logarithms and I'm gonna combine them into a single logarithm. And the way I combine them is dictated by the sign that connects them. Uh, so these two logarithms are being added together. And when the logarithms are being added together, we are going to have to multiply the quantities that are inside the logarithms. So here's the rewriting step to turn these two into one. I'm gonna rewrite this as log base two of, and now I'm gonna multiply these two quantities together. 
When I multiply x times x minus 6, I'm going to distribute x to both terms, and it's going to be x squared minus 6x. That equals 4. Okay, now at this point in time, we can go ahead and exponentiate both sides of the equation. I'm going to save some space and just do it right here, if you're okay with that. I'm going to place a 2 underneath this side, a 2 underneath this side. So now these are exponents above 2. And by doing that, the 2 and the log base 2 cancel. So we have now x squared minus 6x equals 2 to the fourth power which is 16. What we have now is a quadratic equation and we have to solve this quadratic equation with quadratic techniques. And as you no doubt are familiar with, if you have a quadratic equation, uh, you wanna start by making it equal to zero. So I'm gonna rewrite this as x squared minus 6x, 16 is gonna get subtracted, equals zero. Now to solve this quadratic equation, let's just think back with our quadratic techniques. Um, we have square root technique, which we're not gonna do because we have the x there. We have factoring, which we might be able to do. This might be a factorable trinomial. Uh, we have completing the square, which would be kind of easy because we have a, an even number here on, on the middle term. And we also have quadratic formula if we can't think of anything else to do or if nothing else is gonna work. Uh, now this problem happens to be factorable uh, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to re-express it as a product of binomials. Uh, x and x get the x squared. We want minus 8 plus 2. It's going to multiply to negative 16 and add to negative 6. So we get two answers. Our answers are x equals 8 and x equals negative 2. Now, notice I haven't boxed these answers yet, and there's a reason for that. The answers that I have right here, eight and negative two, are solutions, but they are solutions to this quadratic equation. This equation didn't start out quadratic. It didn't start out with an x squared in it. It is very likely that when your log equation creates a quadratic, which is then most of the time gonna create two solutions, that one of these solutions is extraneous and we have to determine which one of those solutions might be extraneous. So what we're gonna do in this problem is we're actually gonna do a check step. And this is something that you can certainly do on every single logarithmic equation. Here's what you're trying to avoid. If you recall, when you began studying exponential and logarithmic functions, you probably looked at graphs of these things. And you might remember that the domain of a log function is zero to infinity or x is uh, greater than zero. Uh, in other words, you cannot do the log of a negative number or log of zero can't evaluate those. The reason why you can't evaluate those is because if you recall in studying what the graphs of these functions look like, the graph of any log function, doesn't matter the base, and you know, ignoring transformations, just a basic log function looks like this. There's an asymptote right here on the y-axis, so uh, the function never hits zero, hence we cannot do this. And the function doesn't graph for negative values, hence we can't do this, okay? So what I have to do is take these answers that I have and I'm gonna substitute them into the original problem. And what I'm looking for is do I create any instances of this? And if I do, then that number is not an answer and we're gonna throw it away, okay? And that then becomes the extraneous solution. Possible both answers are gonna work out just fine, but more than likely, probably one's gonna work and one's not. So let's go ahead and try this. Let's check x equals eight first. 
Uh, if I put 8 in for x, we get log base 2 of 8. That's okay. That's a positive number. Nothing to worry about there. Plus, we get log base 2 of, we're going to put 8 here, so 8 minus 6 is 2. That's okay as well. That's a positive number. If you want to go further in this check, you could evaluate this to 3 and this to 1, add them to 4, and certainly it equals 4, so it checks. It works. So you can take that all the way uh, to complete that check if you want. Let's also check then the other solution. Uh, and actually, before we do that, let's go ahead and box this. So that worked. We're definitely keeping that answer. Let's check x equals negative 2. If I put negative 2 right there, we have log base 2 of negative 2. I can stop right now. I don't need to go, go ahead and plug it in any further. That's the logarithm of a negative number. I cannot take the logarithm of a negative number. Uh, so this solution fails. We're going to throw that away. That answer is what we call an extraneous solution. An extraneous solution is like an extra solution, right? In other words, it's a solution to this equation, but it's not a solution to the original. And so we've got to throw it out. The final example problem in this video, uh, which also completes our series of videos on solving exponential and logarithmic equations, is similar to the last problem in that there are two logarithms on the same side of the equal sign. They're going to need to be combined into a single logarithm first. The method for combining them, however, is going to be a little bit different this time. Uh, the last problem saw that the logarithms were added, and when they were added, we multiplied. This problem, the logarithms are subtracted, and when they're subtracted, we're going to divide these two quantities. So let's show what this looks like rewritten uh, into a single logarithm as our first step. This will become the log of quantity 3x plus 24 divided by x plus 1 equals 1. After we've done that, we now have just a single logarithm. We can exponentiate both sides to get rid of that logarithm. Since this is a log base 10, we're going to raise both sides above a 10. So that then uh, results in 3x plus 24 over x plus 1 equals 10 to the first power, which is 10. We now have a rational equation. So now we're using our rational equation techniques to finish this problem. But what I would do to solve this problem is begin by multiplying the denominator x plus 1 to the opposite side. That then gives us 3x plus 24 equals, distribute the 10 to give 10x plus 10. All right, next we'll move our like terms around to combine. This 10x is going to subtract over to this side, and the plus 24 is going to subtract to that side. So that's going to result in negative 7x equals negative 14. If we divide both sides by negative 7, we get x equals 2. Like in the last problem, and probably I should um, just express that you should probably get in the practice of doing this with every log equation that you solve. Just check your answers and make sure that you don't create any problems with logarithms of, of negative numbers or logarithms of zeros. So if I take the 2 and place it in here, 3 times 2 plus 24 is 30. Log of 30 is fine. If I put 2 here, 2 plus 1 is 3, log of 3 is fine. Again, because 30 and 3 are positive numbers, so I can do those logarithms. Our solution then is x equals 2. Okay, that concludes this video and this series of videos on solving exponential and logarithmic equations. If you like the content, please be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel so you get future content. If you want to see more series like this, please comment down below. 
uh, maybe tell me what kind of series of videos you would like to see next as far as like what subject, what types of equations, types of problems, and I would be happy to make a series uh, for you for that. Thank you very much. <music>